What happens when a narcissist knows that you know? When they know that you figure them out, when they know that you actually know that they're a narcissist, that they're controlling you, that they're manipulating, that they're gaslighting, what actually happens when they know? What happens next? We're going to dive into that a little bit today, but before I forget, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm a self-aware narcissist on this channel to help you understand more about narcissism. If you're new here, please hit subscribe, hit that notification so you get notified when we drop new videos and when we go live on the platform. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, the creator of the NARC app, and your guide in Escape Toxicity, the seven-day challenge to healing, to start your journey moving forward and getting out of toxic relationships and toxic friendships. Narcissism is typically based on this aspect of deception, of hiding something. It's this aspect of shame avoidance. Let me hide from the truth of who I am. Let me hide from the truth of what I've done, of how I've shown up or how I've not shown up in a relationship. You see deception and lies and gaslighting happening time and time again in the narcissistic relationship. Oftentimes we bring cheating into the relationship. There is narcissists that cheat very often. I typically say that all narcissists cheat because they do in one level or another. Whether it looks a certain way and fits in your certain frame of life, that's up to you, but they do cheat you out of something. Your time, your attention, your money, your sex, and oftentimes with other people as well. And what we see is a narcissist does not want to be found out. I didn't want to be found out. I didn't want to acknowledge. And a lot of times I wasn't found out until I got to the place where I was self-aware, understanding, and confessing certain things. Even when I got to the place of saying, okay, I might be a narcissist, my first response was one, deny, and then two, go to other people and make sure they understood I was not a narcissist so they could tell other people that I was not a narcissist. The whole goal was let me hide from it. So that's where a lot of people in general hide from something, and that is they hide from the truth. Even today as you're watching this video, you might be hiding from truth that you don't want to acknowledge. Maybe it's the acknowledgement of the pain that the narcissist doesn't care. Maybe it's acknowledgement of the pain of this healing process is going to take time. Maybe it's acknowledging of the pain of you haven't figured it out so far, so you're still struggling with that, and you're starting to beat yourself up of like, why am I not healed? Why have I not figured this out? That pain is very frustrating and very hard, and the pain typically comes from this aspect of truth. That's where humans in general are very consistent. The narcissist doesn't want to engage with the truth because of what it says about themselves. Oftentimes, you don't want to engage with the truth because you're afraid of the pain that it's going to put you in, or you're afraid that you're going to be stuck in that pain for a long period of time, which is counterintuitive because the truth is the only thing that actually sets you free that actually lets you get out of toxicity and to be able to move forward. So what happens when you start to deal with that truth, not just in your own life, but when you start to realize it in the narcissist life of, wait a second, what's actually going on? We see a lot of different responses. I'll talk through a couple of them, but one of the most typical responses immediately coming out the gate is when you know about the narcissist, when you know what they're doing, when you start to identify the game that's being played, narcissist oftentimes responds in anger. Anger is one of the easiest emotions for a narcissist to tap into because it's quick, it's easy, and it typically hides what's actually going on. When you're dealing with someone being angry and yelling at you, you quickly back down from actually holding them accountable. You back down from actually saying, no, this is what you're doing wrong because that person's screaming in your face. And when he's there yelling and screaming, you're just like, this is not worth me bringing this up. Let me just back away. I'm not going to talk to him about it anymore. We'll just move past it. Narcissists will use anger. They'll use Darvo. They'll use this aspect to deny what's happening, to be able to move forward, to switch it around back onto you. Like to turn it around so it's your fault, not their fault. You'll see a narcissist start to play the victim and switch it as much as they can to be like, that wasn't me. Like that, that, you hurt me. And as simple, like we've seen this time and time again, as simple as you look at their phone and you see a message from another woman and you're like, wait a second, what's going on? It triggers this stuff and you start to realize an affair, an emotional affair, whatever it is. And the thing that gets switched around back on you is like, you invaded my privacy? Like, how dare you look through my phone? Like, are you serious? Like, you just did that? And all of a sudden, you see this anger come out, and you're like, what in the world's going on? You see an anger about something that you did to be able to avoid accountability for what they did. And we see this time and time again. 
They're not ever, it's not their fault. It's never them. It has to be you. The shame and the guilt, the exposure, getting embarrassed, switches everything around of let me attack, let me project, let me ramp up the rage to be able to get you to no longer hold me accountable, to be able to get you to no longer put me in a place where I feel bad about myself because that's not the image that I put out. That's not the mask that I've created. You have to be careful because when a narcissist knows that you know or when you confront a narcissist about narcissism, they might get dangerous. Like it might be at a place where you need to fear what is actually going to happen or what is actually going to transpire. You need to be careful. So many times people are in these relationships and they accuse the other person of being narcissistic and it becomes violent and it escalates really quickly. So please, whatever you do, please be careful and please understand that you're dealing with a person that a lot of times is capable of a lot more than what you imagine because of that rage, because of that frustration that comes out. So please, please be careful. Sometimes they'll just be indifferent. They won't care at all. They won't respond. They won't react. Okay, sure, whatever. So you found out they cheated. Okay, moving on. And you're like, wait a second. Like, this doesn't even make sense because the narcissist is trying to do that to minimize what they've actually done. This is the part where if you see a narcissist being different, when you've confronted, when you like figured it out and they don't really care that you know, that's the part you need to be worried about. Because when they know that you know and they don't care that you know, that's a whole other piece because they no longer like have any semblance of actually like having a limit to what they're going to do. Oftentimes it'll move even faster, move even crazy. It'll put you in a crazy gaslighting situation where you're utterly confused. And you're there sitting across the room screaming at them because they're not opening up, because they're not communicating, because they're not just telling you the truth when you know the truth. And what it does is it makes you look crazy. It makes you look like you don't know what you're doing. Like you don't understand what's actually happening. Thought I had to sneeze. And so many times like it'll come across like you're the crazy one because they're gaslighting, they're manipulating, they're giving you the silent treatment. And then you look insane to everybody else around. And an artist will oftentimes do this by looking indifferent. Not worried. And they're not going to leave because you're not going to leave. They don't think you're going to leave. So like, why does it even matter? You're going to stay. You're going to be here. You're going to keep putting up with it. So it doesn't really matter. If you're in one of these situations and you're running into these issues, like I want you first off to focus on being safe. You have to be very careful. Reach out for help. Get support from other people. Be careful when you're interacting with a toxic person. You might have to get out of the relationship as quick as possible. We have people that have to do exit strategies to be able to get out as quick as possible to make sure they're safe. A lot of times a narcissist is going to use gaslighting and manipulation to be able to hide from this aspect that you figured them out. First aspect is just they, that didn't happen. Denial. Like discard your ideas of like, you don't know what you're talking about. That didn't happen. Like and the whole goal is to make you doubt your truth. Like you saw texts from another woman. You saw texts that were very sensual in nature. You saw location. You saw interactions. You saw pictures. Doesn't matter. That didn't happen. What are you talking about? That's not me. Okay, whatever. No, that didn't happen. And this shutdown that happens, that should make you really worried because that means they know that you know and they don't care. You need to understand that you know what you saw. You know what you heard. But their goal is to convince you otherwise. Their goal is to make you doubt reality and to make you think, well, okay, maybe it wasn't that bad. Maybe it actually just was a friendly thing. Yeah, they were talking inappropriately, but maybe it's just a friendly thing. Maybe it wasn't that bad. And that's the whole goal to keep you locked into the relationship, to keep you stuck because you're minimizing the abuse that's actually happening, what the person is actually doing to you. And we see this time and time again with smearing your name, with triangulation, with putting you out there of like, okay, I'm gaslighting, manipulating, doing all these different things. And you start to minimize it. And you start to think, okay, it's not that bad. Again, I'll stress again, narcissists can get violent. They can get very wild when exposed. They can get very vengeful when you expose them to other people. They might just move on and dump you, or they might come back and hurt you physically. Like, please be careful. Last but not least, I would say, like, don't confront a narcissist on being a narcissist. Typically, one of the first things is they're going to flip it around back on you. They're going to make you feel like the narcissist. They're going to convince you that you're the narcissist. They're going to try their best. If you can't confront a narcissist about a small thing, 
of like how they're showing up, of what's actually happening, of them lying or being honest or being vulnerable or like these small things that you're picking up. If you can't confront them on that and have them work on that or fix that, you're not going to be able to get a label on them. You're not going to be able to convince them that they're a narcissist so that they magically get help or get change. Because if they're unwilling to confront the small stuff, they're definitely not going to confront the big stuff. They're definitely going to deal with the things that are actually affecting them to the highest level. And so at that point, it's pointless for you to be able to go into that. If you can't talk about those behaviors, then you won't be able to talk about the disorders. If you need to get clear, if you need to understand what's going on and to set yourself free, please go to escapetoxicity.com. There we have a seven-day challenge, systematic approach to help break you free from the toxic relationship, break you free from that narcissist. It helps walk you through about what narcissism is, what boundaries look like, what reactive abuse looks like, and how to be able to make the steps forward in your healing, in your growth, in your change, and in your development. Check it out, escapetoxicity.com. <laughs>